<laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Today, if you have your Bibles, I want to turn to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and we'll start at verse 6. And while you're turning, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for the day that you prepared. I thank you for giving us the time to come to your house and to seek after you and to, to know who you are. Lord, I ask that you would send the anointing down in this place right now. And I humble myself before the throne room of God. Lord, I lay myself at your feet this morning, right there on the sea of glass. And Lord, I know that you're holy this morning. I know that you're worthy of all of our praise, of all of our sacrifice. And Lord God, I sacrifice my life to you this morning. I give you my heart, I give you my mouth, I give you my voice, I give you my hands today. And I ask that you would bless it. Lord, I pray for all the souls under the sound of my voice this morning. I pray, Lord God, that you would convict hearts. I pray, Lord God, that you would pour out your fire and your anointing on the congregation. I ask that you would start with me. Lord, let your anointing in here flow like never before in yeah. this new year. Praise Lord, we come to your house to serve you. We come to hear your word. And I ask, Lord God, that we could move past all of our routine things and that we could do something new for you. Lord, I pray and I ask, Lord God, that each and every person that come out to your house today, that we would die right here. Lord, I ask that we would die to the flesh, that we would die to the things of this world, that we would die to carnality, and we would live unto God. Lord, I ask that you would pour out your righteousness on this congregation. Lord, we know that you're a God of love. We know that you're a God of mercy. We know that you're a God of grace. Yes. But Lord, you're also a God of wrath. Lord, we know that you're holy, and we thank you for that. And I ask, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, that we would be a holy and a peculiar people, that we would be a royal priesthood. And I ask, Lord God, that you would use me today. Let this message be your message and not my own. And I ask, Lord God, that it would pierce the hearts of the people listening. Lord, I ask that you would change us. I ask that you would regenerate us. That we wouldn't be the same old, same old that we always been but will be something new and on fire for you. Right. Lord God, I ask that you would consume this congregation, that you would consume this pulpit, and that you would consume Bethel Bible Church today in your fire. Lord, we know that the gates of hell and the fires of hell is not as hot and is not as strong as the fire that you can have burning inside of us. And I ask, Lord God, that our hearts will be ablaze for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 6, amen, if you have it. Amen. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. I want you to circle that in your Bible, verse 7, Romans 6 and 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Now this morning, as we read Romans chapter 6, this is the greatest chapter <coughs> in the Bible on sin. Amen. And as my first sermon of the new year in 2022, I want to preach against sin. Come on. Amen. 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 And there's so many times in our lives that we don't hear good preaching. We don't hear people standing up against sin. We don't see it in our homes. We don't see it as fathers. We don't see it as mothers. We don't have true priesthood in our homes anymore because mom and daddy's caught up with everything. Come on. Because the church is caught up in things. Because the preachers are caught up in things all across America. Yeah. 
And there's nobody to really stand up and preach against sin anymore. But I want to be that man today. Yeah. I want to stand and I want to preach against all the things that we're doing, that we're caught up in, that we think are fun, that we're having a good time doing, but are really costing our soul and our salvation and going to cause us eternal hell. I want to raise a question to you this morning. And I want to do it in humility. I don't want to come and I'm not going to batter you over what you've done or what you're doing or what you ain't doing. But I want to raise a question in your mind. How many of us in here, we live good lives? Come on. We go through cycles with the word. We go through cycles in holiness. We go through cycles in righteousness. We'll live for a day or two holy and righteous unto God. And then we'll fall off. Come on. Yeah. Or we'll live for a month. And we'll really be on fire for God. And we felt his power. And we felt a connection with the creator like we've never felt before. We'll feel something that's there. And we'll feel God moving in our hearts. And we'll feel God moving in our souls. And then before you know it, a lust will come in. A temptation will come in. A flirtation with the world will come in. And then before you know it, we're staying back in the same rut that we was in a year ago. Or two years ago. Or ten years ago. And we keep going back to the same old things, and it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. We serve God, we do good, we pray, we read the Bible, and then something happens, and we feel distance from God, and we go through these cycles in life. Have y'all ever done that? Because I know I have. Yeah. Yeah. We feel like we're doing so good, and we feel like we're so close, and then something will happen in our life. It might be a trial, it might be a sin, it might be something that's in our heart that we never really dealt with. Because we never really died to it. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen. And we see things that come back to life in our hearts and in our minds because we haven't stayed focused on God's word. Amen. We haven't stayed focused on prayer. We haven't stayed focused on supplication like we should. And then we venture back out into things that were wrong. Have you ever been there? I know I've done it. I've struggled with things in my lifetime. Amen? You say, well, you just a chap. Amen. Well, we've been through things. All of us in here has been through things. Yeah. And I want you to know that a trial or temptation will either do one or two things. It'll push you farther from God or it'll bring you closer to God. Yeah. And I want you to know something else this morning. That there's two kinds of people, and I've preached on this before. There's people that are dead in their sin. Come on. And there's people that are dead to sin. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to be saints of God. We're not supposed to live lives of sin. We're not supposed to be sinners. Come on, church. Amen. I'm not a sinner. When I got saved, I was purified. I was purged from the sin of this world. And God clothed me with his righteousness. And today as I stand, I'm a saint of God. I'm not a sinner. Amen? Amen. I don't live a life that's full of sin. And so many times we come to church and we wonder why we can't get over this and we wonder why we can't get over that. It's because the sin hasn't died in our lives. He said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. When Jesus took that cross to Calvary, we knew that he wasn't going to come back. Amen? Yeah, amen? When a man picked up a cross and he carried it to the place where he was going to be crucified, we knew that he would never come back because they was going to crucify him and he was going to die there. And that's what I'm asking you to do this morning. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah. Amen. We pick up our crosses and we carry it to Golgotha and we get on the cross and we die to this life. To be friends with this world, you're an enemy to God. It's what the word says. If you're loving life and you're loving everything that's in this life and of the world, that's not godly. Come on. We're an enemy of God. And we haven't died to sin. You say, I don't want to hear that. I say, I don't care. It's time we take our crosses and we follow him. And we do what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to crawl up on the cross, not just come to the cross and dump out all of our sins and pick them back up when we walk out the door or next week or next month. That's not regeneration. 
You say, what are you talking about? When you're born again, you get saved, but you need something more than just being saved. You need a holy life. You need a separation from the world. You need a fire burning down deep inside that's going to keep you moving towards the things of God. And so many times we come to the house of God, we don't get nothing else. We come in, we see the cross, we lay our sins at the cross, we walk out, we never change. And the reason we never change is because we never die. Yeah. We never go all the way. Amen. I'm not talking about a, a physical death, I'm talking about a spiritual one. Yes. I'm not the same man that I used to be. When I got saved, I got purified. And the sin was washed away and the righteousness come in. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And then as I grow in my faith, I read the word and I pray and I grow and I pray and I read the word. But if I stop praying, I stop growing. If I stop reading the word, I stop growing. Come on, church. And that's when you go back into that cycle. You go right back into the old ways. Because we never fully die. It says, the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. You want to know what's wrong with this country? You want to know what's wrong with this world? It's sin. Yeah. Sin is the problem. Sin is still in our youth. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Sin is keeping husbands away from their wives at night. That's right. Come on, it's not bad hearts or bad people, it's sin. It's sin. Sin is keeping people out of the churches. Sin is pe keeping people from praying. When you stop praying, you start sinning. I don't care what you say, and you know I'm true. You know what I'm saying is true. When you quit praying, you start sinning, and you start doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. That's right. Amen? Amen. Sin is the cause of abortion in America. It's not dirty minds or dirty hearts or dirty people. It's sin that has infiltrated our hearts. It's sin that has infiltrated our homes and infiltrated our churches. And we come to church and we're burdened down with so many things. And we got so many things going on in our life. But it's fun. And we come to the house of God and we can't get anything from God because we're so burdened down with sin. And we won't come and die. That's right. We don't come to die. You got to come to die. Amen? Amen. Yes. You can look at me like that all you want to. But I'm going to preach this message. Okay. Amen? Amen. Yes. Nobody in here ordained me. I want you to know that God ordained me. Yes. Yes. God brought me out of what I was in. God brought me out of the drugs and the drink. And I run the roads just like some of you. Come on. But I'm dead to that life now. I don't want to do drugs. I don't want to drink alcohol. I don't want to act like I ain't got no sense. I want to live my life under God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. I want to die to this world. And that's what it takes. Amen. That's what it takes, y'all. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It says, for he that is dead is free from sin. How many of you in here struggle with things out there? Die to it. Yes. You hear what I said? I said die to it. Amen. Anxiety is a spirit, the spirit of fear. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Yes, yes. And it's by the word of God that you can overcome anxiety. Amen? Amen. But you got to die to it. Woo. Come on. How many of us in here have a problem with drinking? You know what you got to do to drink it? You got to die to it. Yeah. How many of us, of us in here are playing with drugs? You know what you got to do with those drugs? You got to die to them. Amen. I said you got to die to them. Yeah. How many of us in here tell lies? It's time that you die to those lies. It's time that you die to those sins that are in your heart. It's time that you've died of those things that are keeping you away from God. It's time that you've died of those things uh, that are going to separate your soul for eternity. And you keep playing games with them. It's time that you've died of those sexual sins. Come on. Thank you, Lord. 
Hey, I'm doing it this morning. I'm going to tell you how it is. All of these things will keep you out of heaven. That's right. Amen? Amen. Drinking. Come on. Fornication. Drugs and alcohol. All these things of this world. It will keep you out of heaven. And if you want to get a hold on it, you have to die to it. He said you got to die. You say, well, how do I die to things that are in my life that I can't control? <laughs> I want you to know that you can't control sin. You can't medicate it. Amen. You can't overcome it on your own. The only thing that will get rid of the sin in your life is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that will change you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that will come in and it will move you towards him. And the Holy Spirit will come in and it will divide into the marrow of the bone. And you'll feel a fire inside of your life and you can be reborn. Amen. You must be born again, but you can't be born unless you died. Amen. I said you can't be born again unless you died in this world. Yes. All those things that we do that we think is fun. Come on, y'all. Amen. You ride around. I've done all the things that y'all might be doing. Might not be. I don't know. But I want you to know that I rode around listening to rap music. I had my fitted cap on backwards. I had all the Air Forces and the Timberlands. And you don't believe me, you can ask some people in here. I was doing drugs. I sold drugs. And I was not living the right life. My whole family was preachers. And I knew that I was called to preach, but I run from God. I run from God. I've been to church. I've been to so many church services. There's probably more than a lot of people in here combined. Yes. Church after church, message after message, people praying and people praying. And I still wouldn't come to God because I wasn't ready to die because I love the things of the world. The whole time I was an enemy of God. Amen. Yes. I want you to know that one night. In the church service at Revival, I went up and I told the Lord, I said, I'm tired of living this way. Woo! And when you get tired of living that way, after you've been through struggles and trials and temptations, and you go to jail and you get out of jail and you have one friend and then this friend leads you, come on. And the money runs out and the fun runs out and the sin runs out. Come on, and you're still feeling empty inside, and you're still lonely because there's no, no feeling to fill that void anymore. It's, it's party after party, and that doesn't do it for you anymore. You know what it's time to do? It's time to die. Yes. It's time to come to the house of God and give your heart to Jesus and let his blood cleanse you. Let his blood wash you and live a life that's different. Yeah. You know, God is a holy God. You know, right now, they're singing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all around the throne room of God right now. Right now, as you sit in church, there's a throne way out there somewhere at the highest point, and God the Father's sitting there, and they're singing to him right now. They're praising his holy yeah, name. that's right. And you know, we always say that God's a God of love, but they're not singing love, love, love. They're not singing mercy, mercy, mercy. Yes, his mercy endureth forever, but they're not singing grace, grace, grace. They're singing holy. Yes. Holy. And we don't have any holiness people stand up anymore. Are you saying you're preaching a denomination? No, I'm preaching a way of life. I don't care if you're Baptist, you better be holy. I don't care if you're Methodist, you better be holy. I don't care if you're non-denominational, you better be holy. And the only way that you can live a holy life is to die unto God and be alive unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is a powerful sermon. It's hard to preach. You think I like standing up here preaching things like this? It's hard. But I do it because I love you and I love your soul. I might have never seen you before, but I know that God has a place for you. And you're in the right place to come and receive it. And you need to give it up and leave those things behind. They're not worth it. 
The sins of this life, the sins of this world, they're not, they're not worth losing your soul and dying and going to hell. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Come on, church. Yeah. And God is a holy God. And the only way that you're going to enter in is if you be holy. Amen. It's through holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see God, is what the word says. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that he shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. When I lay my head down tonight, I'm not scared if I die in my sleep because I know where I'm going. That's right. yeah. I said I know where I'm going. Yeah. There ain't a question am I going. How many of you in here today, can you honestly say, if I died right now, I know exactly where I'm going, and there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to walk with Jesus on the streets of gold. Amen. 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 Some of us in here, we couldn't say that. We couldn't stand up and say, I know that I know that I know that I'm right with God, and if I took my last breath right now, that I would walk with him. Yeah. You know why? Because it's sin in your life. It's sin there. If you question your salvation, you have no salvation. If you're questioning if you go to heaven or not, you're not going. Come on, church. Because you haven't died. And you haven't been born again. I've had people that come to church, come to me and say, hey, I don't even know if I'm saved. Amen? In different churches, different places. Lots of people I've prayed with have said the same thing. Might have went to church for years. Well, I want you to know if something as big as the devil moves out and something as big as God moves in, you're going to know it. You're going to know when you get saved. You're going to know that power that's inside. I want you to know that I stand here on the authority of Jesus Christ and his power. Not on my own accord. Amen? Amen. He's got power. You think that those things out in the world are, are good and they feel good and you have a good time. It's nothing to what God can give you. It's nothing that the life that God can give you. It's nothing over top of what God can pour out on you. When I lived here in Hapomatic, I had nothing. The only things I had is what my daddy gave me, which he shouldn't have even given me because I didn't deserve it. I was nothing and I was a nobody and I was a drug addict and I didn't act right. I smoked a lot of dope. I did powder. I smoked crack. I stole things. Come on, church. Yeah. I'm pouring out my heart before you this morning. I've done things that were wrong. I'd see my daddy and I'd give him the finger. And I walked the other way. I'd see my nanny and my papa on the street, and they would see me. And they would pull down the side road to try to catch me, but I'd run and hide because I didn't want to be around that. Because the drugs and the sin had overtaken me, and it was controlling my whole life. I said it was controlling my whole life. I thought I was thugged out and swagged. I was nothing and nobody, and I was going straight to hell. And I want you to know something. As I stand here today, I ain't that man. Thank you, Lord. I ain't hooked on drugs no more. I ain't drinking liquor no more. No. I ain't running the roads no more. I ain't sitting no more. I ain't doing those things that I used to do no more. Because I'm living my life under God. Amen. And the life that I live now is no comparison to the life that I lived then. God. God has given me things that I don't deserve. I got a good job. A young, beautiful wife. Amen. A child. Come on. Amen. I got a family that loves me and a church family that loves me. Yeah. I got people that's praying for me. Yeah. But you know what? I got a power that's deep inside. I got a fire that's risen up inside of me that will not be put out. Come on, old church. Amen. I got a holiness that's all around me that I could have never had out in the world. And it changed my life. 
It changed my life. Death has no more dominion over me. I know that I'm saved. I know it. I know it without a, a twinkling of an eye, without a bat of an eye. I know exactly where I'm going to go right now if I was to drop dead behind this pulpit. I'm going straight to be with Jesus. If you drop dead right now, right where you're sitting, if Jesus Christ come back for us right now, where would you be? What about New Year's night? Let's get down to it now. New Year's Eve at 12 o'clock on New Year's Eve. What was you doing? Where was you at? What was in your hands? All across this country, they was drinking and they was partying and they was doing drugs and they was dancing down at the belly rub. Come on. That's what Nanny calls them anyway. The belly rub. What if Jesus would have come back at 12 o'clock midnight on New Year's Eve? What if he just showed up in the clouds at nighttime, 12 o'clock, like a thief in the night? What if he had done it? How many church people would have went to heaven that night? How many people had to wake up on New Year's Day and say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done last night? Come on, church. That's not being dead under sin and alive under God. That's living for yourself. That's right. Sin is selfish. When I was living a life full of sin, I was a selfish man. Didn't care about you. Didn't care about your mama. Didn't care about your daddy. Didn't care about my own. Why would I care about you? Come on. Because sin had twisted my heart. Sin had twisted my mind. And I believed a lie that I didn't even know that I was believing. Amen. Amen. It says, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we to God. Yeah. It takes you to die to really live. Y'all young people think y'all living, riding around, doing things that ain't right? Come on. Yeah. I was there, I know. I see you on Facebook. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you old folks, I see y'all on Facebook too. <laughs> I want you to know your sins will find you out. Amen? Amen. Right. It's time to die, church. Amen. It's time to pick up our cross. Not only carry the cross, but get up on the cross and pass through it. Then we can be seated in heavenly places. Join heirs with Jesus Christ and alive under God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to know that this morning I'm alive. Yeah. I'm alive. Praise God. When I was serving the devil, I thought I was alive, but that won't know. Amen. That won't life. That's right. That won't no way to live. That won't no fun. It was pain and turmoil, loneliness, wrong living. But today, I'm justified. Yes. Today, I got a feeling in my soul that I never had before. Yes. Today, I want to be humble under God. And I don't want to keep going through the cycle of living right and then sinning and then living right and then sinning. I want to come and die right here. I want Romans 6, 7 to be our scripture for today. He that is dead is free from sin. And if you're tired of sinning, if you're tired of the same old things that just keep coming back and you can't get rid of them and you can't never get over them, it's time that you die to them. Yeah. It's time that you be born again. And it's time that you live your life under God through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Jesus has done things for me that no man can. He's opened doors for me that no man can. He shut things behind me that no man can open. He's taken things out of my heart that I thought would never leave. He's helped me through times that it looked like I'd never get back up. Yes, yes. He's helped me through times that was hurtful. And it looked like I'd never get back up, DJ. It looked like I was down and out and I was just going to keep getting stepped on. But I want you to know that God always picks his people up. God will always come through and make you alive. God will always come through and put something in your heart that you need. He'll always bring you through. Amen. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Because you're the one that keeps forsaking God. He's prepared a day and an hour for us. He's prepared this message for you. This message ain't just for you. It's for me. I'm preaching to myself this morning. I don't want to live a life of a cycle of sin. I want to live a life that's holy and acceptable unto God. I don't want to smoke and drink and party and do the things of the world. I want to do holy and righteous things. My granny told me when I got on there, she said, you got the power to take a lot of people to heaven with you, but you got a lot of power to take a lot of people to hell with you if you don't do the right thing because people's watching you. I want you to know that this morning. People's watching you. Everything you say, everything you do, people's watching you. Those babies is watching you. Your neighbors that you never see, they watching you. Your family, they watching you. The person sitting beside you, they watching you. Yeah. Jesus Christ is watching you. He's keeping a record. You better have your mess under the blood. You need to die. Die to that sin. Die to those things that are separating you from God. Will you stand with me this morning? I'm going to sing you a song of invitation. And as I sing this song, I want you to come to the front and die. Don't come to see me. Don't come to play games. Don't come for the same old cycle of life. But come with your cross and mean it this time. Leave out of here, born again, regenerated. Every head bow and everybody praying. I'm going to sing this song. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to come. You don't come, it's your fault. It's not mine. I've done my part. Right. Yeah. If the Holy Ghost is moving you to come up here, you need to come. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Just 
Lord, I pray for each and every soul under the sound of my voice one more time, Lord. Lord, you know exactly what's on the hearts of the people. You know exactly what's on their minds. Yeah. Lord, I ask that you would convict. I ask that you would set apart. I ask that you would consecrate. And I ask that you would make disciples in this place. Yeah. Lord, I ask that you would lead us into all truth and all righteousness that you would put our feet on the righteous path. Yeah. Lord, I rebuke every evil and every assignment me, that the enemy has put out against us. And I loose the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Holy Ghost yeah. to yeah. purge yeah. us in each and every way. And I ask, Lord God, that you would keep us. Lord, I ask that we would die today. And I ask, Lord, that we would be alive unto you. That yeah. we wouldn't keep the same old cycle of sin but we would move into a greater relationship with you yeah. in the victory. Lord, we thank you for it today. We honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen.